Hello my friends and welcome to another Affinity Photo Tutorial. And this time we will do some really cool stuff because we are looking into how to create that nice, interesting vintage look um, that is so hot on the internet. So um, you can do a lot of things, not just the Instagram stuff, but really get creative, get arty, create your own style with the pictures. Um, before we get started, I want to show you something that I created for you because I really love your support and your feedback and your comments. So I want to give back more um, to the community. So I went ahead and I created a Patreon account um, where you can get all my content and the videos and even more stuff that I will provide. And I thought if you want to support me so we can do more stuff together, um, I did an early supporter kind of thing. So it's limited to 100 people. It's just $1 a month. And um, you get a lot of extra things like I will provide the original files with all of the layers so you can look into them, what I did exactly. And so you can learn more. Also, what you get with this is that you get an access to a Discord account, uh, not Discord account, Discord channel, I'm sorry, where we can talk with each other and there is even a feedback channel so you can post your pictures. I can give you feedback. We can talk about it. There is even a voice channel so we can do kind of a hangout thing where we meet together maybe once a week. I don't know. We have to test it out. I'm not sure yet. And um, we can talk about things, maybe make an online tutorial or something live. And um, what else is there? You can get earlier access to the videos. I will provide some extra posts here. You get the original source files. And ah, of course, uh, if you're a supporter, um, you also get more of a say in what future topics might be. Um, so for the suggestion, the selection of topics, stuff like that. If you want to support me, you can do that. Of course, all of the videos, all of my links um, will still be free for you on YouTube. So there's absolutely no need to do this. It's only if you want to support me. Okay, um, let's get started with the vintage look. And um, one thing you might want to do before you get into all the vintage editing is just head over to Google and search for 70s photos or 60s photos or 80s photos, any kind of time period where you think um, this is kind of the look that I want to achieve with my pictures. And as you can see, it really depends on the material, the chemicals, the exposure to humidity, to temperature, to light, on how the picture de de degraded over the years. Um, so some have more of this yellow hue, some have more of this red hue, um, others have more of a blue thing going on or a brownish thing. So there's all kinds of ways um, how pictures degrade over time. So here you see one with a bluish hue in the picture. So there's a lot of different kind of styles. Um, there's not just one vintage look um, you can achieve, you see. Um, also, you can see there is the, the whites and the blacks are kind of washed out. So the, this, it didn't have that kind of range um, to capture light and uh, to capture gradients in that time. So the, the photo material wasn't as good uh, for amateur photo photographers or just in general. Uh, so this can good, could be a good inspiration, also kind of an approximation to see how much you want to change or influence your picture. And of course, keep in mind, it is your photo. You can do whatever you want. So it doesn't have to be a simulation of a vintage look. It can go in a very artistic and crazy and over the top direction, whatever you feel is interesting uh, for your picture. And I have a super useful advice for you. It's a trick that professional photographers, professional photo editors um, often use. And these are color textures and grunge maps. And I would really suggest that you make a folder where you collect a lot of them so you can use them anytime you want. And what I'm talking about is this, stuff like that. And it looks like it wouldn't fit with a photo, but it gives you really cool effects and abilities to influence the look of your picture. Also this looks really crazy and artistic, watercolor kind of thing. But if you blur it a little bit, if you layer, um, if you do layer blend effects, stuff like that, I will show you in this video how it's done. 
um, you can achieve really nice look stuff like this with with scratches. By the way, the next video I will do is just about grunge maps and how to use them and also how to use these um, blend ranges over here, which is a bit more advanced. So I'm not going to touch this in this video, but the next one will be about that. There is another very nice watercolor um, texture, basically. Okay, so let's get started and we will start with this picture which is okay, it's not too interesting maybe, but we will make it into a really nice picture. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we click on the layer with the photo and we go down here where it says adjustments. And from adjustments, what we do is select the color balance. And there you can see it's paired into three pairs, which is say cyan and red magenta and green, yellow and blue. So this is either more cyan or more red, either more magenta or more green, either more yellow or more blue. And you can already see if I play around a little bit here, it already gets this vintage kind of look that we have seen in the other pictures. So of course, like this, for example, is a very nice way to have something that looks vintage. If we compare this with pictures here, maybe this one, which has a reddish yellow tint. So you see, reddish and yellow. Okay, this gives us a hint on what we need to do. So we go here on red and here a bit on yellow and maybe this one a little bit more on the magenta part. And we, we go into the direction. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, it's, it's up to your taste. It's up to the source material. Um, that we are working with. Now, why do I use grunge maps? Why do you use color maps? And the thing is, I use it because this is applied uniformly over all of the pictures. So it, it looks too perfect. It looks too nice. If you look at the pictures here, um, maybe look at another picture, like here, for example, you can see that the, the um, how can I say, the color, Digration? How, how is it pronounced? I'm sorry. <laughs> how the color degrade, degraded over time is not the same on all of the picture, you know? So maybe a part was more protect, protected from sunlight or humidity uh, than another part. And we will simulate this by just using a grunge map. So, uh, for example, if we use this one, which looks very crazy right now, but what we're going to do is we go here to the blend modes and we set it to overlay. And then we go here to opacity and reduce it to something that looks like maybe 50% for now is good, something, a look that we want to have. And now you see, but there is too much details. There is this watercolor edge, it's not good. We don't want to have that. So we click here on effects, we select this layer with the color map and go on effects. And then we go on Gaussian blur. And there we can play around to find something where we say, okay, this is a good look for us, maybe this one. And what you want to do, um, you can see if you go very blurry, the edges go darker because here it's getting transparent. So this is not good. What we want to have is to preserve um, the original shape. So you click here and preserve alpha. And as you can see um, there, uh, the edges get light again. So uh, this is good. You see, so there we have still the watercolor shapes and then we get blurry 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 and it's gone you see and still but we have this nice color effect you see if i if i um, hide it again it looks like this the other one looks like this so it's, you can do some really cool stuff with it um let's try the other one let's try this one um again and of course um please please don't be scared to experiment don't be scared to try out things I provide all the links for the original files in the description of the video. So download the pictures, open them and experiment. And if it goes wrong, don't worry, just close the file and open again and start again and try around. Because only when you fail, only if you experiment, you can learn something new. So this is a really good way. Um, don't be scared and maybe not try it out with your very important pictures that you took maybe once in a lifetime kind of photos that you have don't don't experiment with them 
experiment with stuff that you downloaded from the internet where it, it doesn't matter if the picture gets destroyed in the process or not. So uh, let's go back to this and uh, let's see on different um, layers uh, or blending modes, I'm sorry, different layer blending modes, um, what we can achieve. So overlay is very good. Soft light is also a nice one, um, but you can go very crazy. You can do whatever you like because it's your picture. It very much depends on what you want to achieve with the picture. So this one, it's very blown out, but maybe this is what you want to achieve. So uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong uh, with using the picture like this, or uh, maybe let's reduce this a little bit. You, you can go like this. There's nothing wrong with it. It looks vintage. It looks a little bit crazy, but it's really nice. And um, let's uh, maybe for now set it on soft light. There we go. Maybe uh, I will push this up a little bit because I want to show you something. And this is, um, if we zoom into the picture, we have these nice things here, like this one here up there. And it looks like the picture is damaged, like um, the protective layer over the chemicals of the picture has been damaged over time, maybe by water, uh, maybe by humidity or any kind of other influence. So... Um, this is really nice for us. Uh, we even have another map. Uh, we have this one with the scratches on top. So we can also use this. And uh, with this, you can even go and say, I click on this layer and then I click down here on the mask layer. So now the picture is still completely visible. Um, but what I can do is uh, let's select the mask layer, go on layer and invert and then we go to the brush tool over here, paint brush tool, set it to a fairly good size, maybe a little bit bigger, like this, yes. Um, the hardness is on zero, that's good for us. Opacity we can leave on 100% maybe for now. Um, let's set this to white and you can see, aha, uh -huh, if I do this, I can paint in here and add some stuff to the picture where I want to have it. So it's not everything, it's just some parts. Maybe up here a little bit, maybe down here a little bit, maybe go here on the edges. There we go. We can do some very cool stuff. And um, let's go back to the move tool so um, we don't have the brush anymore. And now we click back on the grunge layer and we will set it to something um, that fits our interests. Um, like I said, Overlay is really nice for these kind of things. Soft light is good, hard light is maybe a bit too extreme, uh, but let's try hard light and reduce the opacity. Um, so like this, maybe, is not too bad. Okay, and then activate the other layer again. Whoa, this was not the right one. Where's the right one? Did we use this one? Yeah, we used this one, okay. Uh, maybe hard light is not the right one to use here. Let's see, experiment, overlay. Let's go with overlay. Use it a little bit. And now you can see we have a little bit of scratches in the picture. We have a little bit of stuff going on at the edges. So it makes the picture more interesting. And of course, I mean, you can experiment as much as you want with this and go crazy with it and try out different things. Um, let's go more here more here, uh, maybe a bit more here. So you can see it gets really interesting. You can be so creative uh, just because of these kind of grunge maps and color things and abstract colors that you can apply um, to the picture. Okay, I think we will leave it with this picture and go to the next one and experiment with that a bit more. So I will delete the mask here. Or should I delete the mask? No, I will not delete the mask. I will duplicate this one and then uh, delete the mask because I want to give you the layers where you can look at this and what I did with the picture. Um, I will drag this down here. And this time we will just use these two so I can leave the others alone. Yes, okay. I think that's good enough. Um, let's reset this layer really quickly. So this should be normal again. Yes, okay, that's normal. So now we have this picture, a lot of people taking selfies. So I thought this is a good idea. 
um, to start out with this picture. I don't know, start out, but it included in the tutorial. And um, again, we do the same thing. We click on the picture layer and we click down here on adjustments and we go for um, cell, no, uh, sorry, a color balance. Color balance. And then um, we try to figure out what is the look that we're going for. Maybe we go to the other direction, make it a little bit cooler. Let's see. Maybe like this. Okay. So this is more of the, in the other direction, this kind of bluish hue. Um, let's look here. There was one with a bluish hue. This one, for example, it's very kind of blue and um, a bit of pink, maybe violet, a little bit violet. Um, so let's see. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. More blue, more blue. That's not too bad. Huh? What do you think? Let's compare. Okay. One thing we can also do, you can see here, um, the contrast is reduced in the picture. Uh, so let's click on our layer. And, oh, by the way, um, uh, you can drag this into here. So, it just applied, so it's just applied to this layer. So this might be a good idea um, if you work with multiple pictures in one, um, I could say in one composition. Okay, um, let's go to our curves. There we go. And um, so this is the darker parts of the picture. This is the lighter parts. Uh, so if I drag this over here, it's getting really light. If I drag this over here, it's getting really dark. But what we can do is if we drag this up here, you can see um, that the darker parts are going lighter. And if I drag this down, you can see, oh, sorry, that was not the right one. If you drag this down, you can see that the lighter parts are getting darker. So I have a reduced contrast in the picture. Let's drag this up a little bit more. So you can see you can be really precise with the things that you want to achieve in your vintage look. Um, you're not limited to anything or by anyone. It's not like it's a pre-made Instagram filter. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve with your picture. So. Um, let's take this one again and see if we blend this again, maybe try this time soft light and, um, then go on to layer effect and blur it. And we again want to preserve alpha. Like I said, it's very important. Maybe I leave in a little bit of this kind of, um, destruction that's going on here. It's a bit artsy, but I kind of like it. So why not leave it in here? Um, let's try the grunge. Um, put this also to soft light or maybe overlay. Put it to overlay. What? Um, it's If you use blend modes for layers, it's important uh, what uh, kind of... Uh, how can I say how they are arranged? So you can see if grunge is below the color layer, it will just apply to the picture. But if I pull it above, it will apply to the color layer and to the picture layer. So this is important to know this. Um, and we can play with this a lot. We can do really interesting things. Um, should we blur this? Maybe a little bit and maybe try here if we can find something. This is kind of cool. This is nice. Oh, it's but it's too much on some edges. All right, let's see. Darken is kind of cool. Oh, uh, I'm an idiot. I was on the wrong layer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's set this back to soft light and let's go to the grunge map and uh, go up here. Color burn. Color burn is nice. There we go. This is pretty cool. 
So as you can see, just experiment and you can go really crazy. You can go, you can go any way you want with your pictures. And I think this is kind of interesting. It's a bit, you know, it's not original vintage, but it's not always needed. It's not always the thing that you want to achieve. Sometimes you just want to have something and it is more your own personal style. So it's vintage style. But at the same time, it's artistic, it's creative style. So you find your own version, your own way of expression. Of course, we can still take it away and um, just have the original uh, with a little bit of color grading. So um, you can do uh, whatever you like with your pictures. Uh, one more thing I want to show you that I personally really like to do with pictures is um, click on the picture layer and then go down here to live filters, live filters, and you go to vignette filter. Vignette means uh, that the outside of the picture is getting darker and the middle is staying the same brightness. In some programs, you can even make the middle of the picture um, lighter. Um, I do it too much at the start so I can see where the circle is. And uh, as you can see, there we have the circle in the middle. You can even change the shape of the circle. So make it because it's a white picture, maybe it, maybe it a little bit ellipse. And then we push it out again uh, to the borders of the picture, maybe like this, and then reduce the effect, like uh, make it more exposure again. So it's just a light effect. Okay, um, let's see. This is before, this is after. It's a subtle change, but what will happen is that it focuses the attention of the viewer more to the middle of the picture, more to the main objective of the picture. You're not getting as distracted uh, by the other parts in the picture. So it's a very nice effect to focus the view on the main element um, of the picture. So yeah, I think this is it. So we created one that is a bit more artsy and we created one that is a bit uh, more realistic vintage style. Uh, so this is, I guess, I think more realistic uh, to what original vintage pictures look and feel like. And the other one is more of a vintage artistic kind of thing, uh, which is also very interesting and very nice. Um, so like I said, be creative, do your thing and find out uh, what your own voice is for your creations. Okay, um, thank you very much for watching. Leave comments. Um, you can ask me questions in the comments, suggest next topics, uh, give me feedback. And um, if you want to support me, I will link uh, my Patreon page uh, in the description of the video. Uh, thank you very much if you do. Uh, there is no need to do, but if you want to support me, uh, if you want to get access also to more uh, content, um, please do. And see you around in the next episode, which will be about grunge maps and how to use them and also how to use this blend ranges element up here. This is giving you kind of a superpower of working with blend modes, but it's a bit more advanced, so I don't want to use it in this video. Okay. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.